Post spring, Tennessee wins. Eight or less. Nine, 10, 11 or more. What say you, Caleb Calhoun? Our postseason prediction, and it's official. You can't change this until midways or so through preseason camp. So you got to stick with this because I know you like to waffle. I'm kidding. Caleb doesn't waffle at all, actually. All right, so what are you picking out of out of that quattro of choices? Today's tough question brought to you by Craven Wings. Don't forget about their brunch on Saturday mornings. It's phenomenal. Well, I'm about to spelling be this. Could you use it in a sentence? Uh, could you uh, – ex- uh, uh, is this a regular season or the whole season? Oh, man. You're making it more complicated on me. All right, I'm going to say – uh, just quite simply that it is, I want to say it's overall. Whole season. Okay. Whole season. 11. I'm going 11 again. 11 or more. Okay. For the record, on our Craven Wings Today's Tough Question, we've got eight coming in at 10%, nine coming in at 43%, 10 coming in at 36%, 11 or more coming at, in at 10%. So you are in the minority much like your Vescovi take, you just look from the other side for everybody who accuses me of being a homer or, or, or who of being an anti-homer. I guess I'm accused of being a hater. Well, guess what? Now I all of a sudden seem like a homer because I'm picking Tennessee to do 11 or more. Dave, I think they all think what I thought. Though. I think they all think regular season on that poll. Okay, well, we're we're going everything. We're going across the board. That's the way I'm doing it. It's already on the Twitter. Uh, so, g- given that. I mean, a bowl game is pretty unpredictable. Making the college football playoff, I don't think, is in the cards. So I still think the question holds a lot of merit. If you're going regular season, it's really difficult to go 11 or more to me. But I think Tennessee, at at the end of the day, will win nine regular season games at the minimum. But I'm going to go 10. I'm going to say 10 regular season wins. And the Vols barely missed the college football playoff based off post spring and the studies that I've done on other SEC schools. And it's a heartbreaking season, but you get loaded up because you've seen enough from Nico for the 2024 season. And I think Tennessee's excited based off this season, but maybe not making the college football playoff will be a slight disappointment again. Wouldn't surprise me if they made it, but I've got Tennessee at a 10 win regular season see i think there is a chance that tennessee either goes a, i I'm, i think 10 is the baseline for tennessee in the regular season because outside of alabama georgia and then kentucky has a trap game and I, I say trap game in the sense of just when they line up i don't see any other game tennessee has a shot of losing this year i think tennessee easily goes through every other game and well, so, you have to say they have a shot at losing South Carolina since South Carolina handled them. But I think Tennessee will be motivated and won't have distractions. But at least a shot. You have to say A&M has a shot. Oh, Alabama. A&M doesn't have a shot. Guys, A&M doesn't have a shot of beating Tennessee. I'm saying this right now. Tennessee will beat the brakes off them. And Jimbo okay. Fisher is going to say, well, we just didn't execute, as he says at the end of every game. <laughs> Okay, well, let me ask you this. What do you make of this number, too? Because I, I, I'm i not a gambler, but I enjoy looking into these numbers. Alabama was a nine-and-a-half-point favorite at Tennessee. And right now on FanDuel, they're a seven-point favorite, Caleb, a seven-point favorite at home. What does that say about this series and about these two teams as the Vols will face off against the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa? It tells me that the odds makers think that these two programs have have come a lot closer together. The gap is not as great. And I, I believe that's the case. Now, the week of, if Jalen Milrow or Ty Simpson it turns out to be a star quarterback and you're on the road, Tennessee could be a 12-point favorite, and then that's moot. But – as far as right now, I think they're saying the two programs are a lot closer than they were a year ago. Agree or disagree? Oh, absolutely. And I wrote about this yesterday. I think that Tennessee has a unique chance. I said they had last year they had a chance to pounce because of their schedule and the way it started at the beginning of the year. 
they have another unique chance to pounce this year because this is going to be a rebuilding year for Alabama. And Clemson is continuing to fade. I mean, guys, if both of them have bad years this year, do you know what that does for Tennessee in recruiting? The only obstacle to them at that point is South Carolina. They got to make sure that South Carolina gets out of the way. But well, it's huge. But let, but, but let's also keep kind of our eye on. I think that would be huge for Tennessee recruiting. But let's let's keep an eye, eye on this season for something special, special to happen. They would have to win every game except for one, which we would think would be Georgia. But let's wait. I mean, that game has to be played. Can Tennessee beat Georgia this year? Are they even close to that yet, or is it going to take some more time? I think if the ball bounces their way and a few things break a certain way, they could definitely beat Georgia. I don't think they're better than Georgia. Neutral site, because look, last year's score, you and I have both talked about, that wasn't a 27 to 13 score. That was a 27 to 13 score, the way that 96 Tennessee Florida game was a 35 to 29 score. Okay, Georgia beat the breaks off Tennessee last year, and they. Their Kirby Smart's game plan was to utilize as much clock as possible so Tennessee's tempo couldn't really take hold. If he wanted to, he could have beaten Tennessee 44 to 13, and he just chose not to. Let me ask you this College Football News predicts the balls go 10 and 2, uh, which is about where I am. Do you think Tennessee fans would be happy with 10 and 2 after an 11 win season last year? I think so, because I think most Tennessee fans agree this is a transition year. Pete Futak of College Football News put that up. He has them losing. I disagree with his 10-2 and two because he has them losing at Florida and at Alabama. I, I, I really, I, I've, tried, I've tried to look at how and make the case for how Florida could beat Tennessee this year. I, do, I don't see it. Dave, do you? I really don't see how Florida beats Tennessee this year. No, I don't either. Um, Wisconsin in the Citrus Bowl, according to – is that still CFN? Uh, college yeah, football news? Yeah, Utah, yeah. Uh, man, there's just something, a part of me, maybe it's my age, that I don't want Tennessee to ever go back to the Citrus Bowl after the whole Florida debacle and making fun of Tennessee and that sort of thing. Does anybody want to go back to the Citrus Bowl? I'd rather go back to the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, whatever – the heck oh, the Gator know. and the Outback Bowl are both getting old too, though. Those yeah. Florida Bowls in general are just annoying. I'll well, no, I, I agree, but at least you're in Tampa, for goodness sake. You get the breeze of the ocean. <laughs> it's not miserably hot like Orlando. I, I mean, unless you're planning the trip to Disney, why in the world would you want to go to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando? Why? As a matter of fact, why does anybody want to go to Orlando other than Disney World? That is a Heck hole. <laughs> yeah. but I mean, no, I, I got you. I got, I mean, I feel you on that. It's, um, I mean, in the last Citrus Bowl Tennessee went to, it was probably the angriest I ever saw Tennessee play because that was the 2001 Citrus Bowl when you thought you were going to go to California to cover that team and you got stuck going to Orlando again. Yeah, and, I wasn't really, I wasn't really happy about that one either, but I tried yeah. to make the best of it. Okay, so uh, according to Brandon Marcello, Tennessee, and I like his work a lot, Tennessee at number nine. Let me ask you about the programs that he has ahead of Tennessee. And at the end of the day, on January the 16th, whenever the college football playoff is over and the season has concluded, will we have the discussion that these teams are better or worse than Tennessee? He's got Penn State at eight. Now, Brandon has worked a lot with the Big Ten. I'm not saying he's biased. But Brandon has worked a lot with the Big Ten. He's also worked a lot with Auburn. I think Tennessee is significantly better than Penn State, and that will show at the end of the year. You? He's got them at eight. I think Tennessee is, is significantly better than ten, Penn State. And they're, uh, let's put this out there. They're significantly better coached than Penn State at the yes. same time. Will it show at the end of the year? They get Michigan at home. But they visit Ohio State – and I think that's probably a loss. And they visit Michigan State, who should be resurgent this year. So, yeah, I think it'll show at the end of the year. I think Penn State is going to lose at Ohio State. And they'll either lose at Michigan at home, but if they don't lose at home to Michigan, they're going to lose to somebody else who's going to sneak around and beat them. Maybe Maryland sneaks up and beat them. Southern Cal in at seven. I can't argue a, a team that did as much as they did with a returning Heisman Trophy winner. So I'm not going to argue that. You stop me if you want to argue one of these. Alabama, I know, is in a rebuilding year. I can't argue, though, them being above Tennessee if FanDuel still thinks that they're a seven-point favorite in Tuscaloosa. Um, I'm stopping you there. 
I am stopping you there. Tennessee beats Alabama in Tuscaloosa. I think Tennessee is the better team this year. I am I I've I've come around. Tennessee is the better team than Alabama this year. Now, I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna lash out at Brandon Marcello for having Alabama ahead of Tennessee. Or bet my mortgage. Yeah, but I, I will say I bet my mortgage and Travis uh, pointed it out. Would I bet my mortgage? Yeah. Um, I'm oh, not. Okay. I'm not going to lash out. I understand why anybody would put Alabama ahead of Tennessee. I personally have Tennessee ahead of Alabama this year. That I, I'm not high on them. I've been calling. For, I've been screaming rebuilding year for two months, and I don't. I think it's finally starting to catch on. They're in a rebuilding year. Okay, here we go. I'm not taking Tennessee to win in Tuscaloosa till it happens. I'm just not. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't take Tennessee to beat Florida or to beat Alabama as long as those streaks were ongoing and I was proven wrong. Um, and fine, I learned. I'm a better man for it. But I'm not taking Tennessee to win at Tuscaloosa until they show me they can do it. I think it'll be incredibly close. Uh, portions of the program, before we get to this top five, brought to you by Andy Mason, andymasonrealestate.com, your realtor in Knoxville. How awesome is that? It's so simple to save thousands or tens of thousands of dollars with Andy Mason real estate.com because he's got over 40 years of experience, best service and best prices in the Knoxville area. Andy Mason real estate.com. So let's get to the top five. LSU is number five, according to Marcella. I again will not argue this because they have a more solidified quarterback situation. However, I think you might argue it. Is LSU four spots better than Tennessee? LSU at five, Tennessee at nine? I'm not arguing LSU at five. I'm arguing Tennessee at nine, but I'm not okay. arguing LSU at five. I mean, y'all know where I've been on LSU and Brian Kelly this year. I'm really, really high on them. So Okay, so Florida State at number four. And it's time to lash out. What? Here goes the lashing. Here goes the lashing. What? What? Florida State did not beat a ranked team last year. They were 10 and 3, and everybody's celebrating Mike Norvell. They played three tough teams, lost all three of them in a row. And how do people all of a sudden think Mike Norvell has rebounded that program? He hasn't. He hasn't. Florida State played in a terrible ACC last year and didn't beat anybody good. They're being I agree. Great. And, and, and again, we're not talking, I, we're not talking what they actually do. Like Florida State, because they're in the ACC. Could very well uh, win more games than Tennessee. Uh, could slip into the college football playoff. I don't think they're going to do any of that, okay? But, all right, so I'm talking about eye test at the end of the year. In the mid-January, early February, who do we think's better? I think Tennessee will be markedly better unless uh, Joe Milton and Nico have issues at the quarterback position. I just think they'll be remarkably better than Florida State. And with Josh Heupel, I don't believe quarterback issues are ever really going to be a, a, a problem. Ohio State at number three, I can't argue that. Michigan, number two, I could argue that, but I won't. Georgia, number one, I don't think either of us can argue that. What do you make of the top three? Yeah, no issues with the top three. I think that Ohio State, I think it's almost to Ohio State fans put up or shut up for Ryan Day. I, I, and they have a right to feel that way to expect a national championship because I, I, I've, I've touted LSU, but just behind LSU in terms of a job where you can load up on talent is Ohio State, and they keep getting blown out in the playoff when they get there, if, if they get there. And I think that's a big, big, big problem, and I think fans are kind of – they shouldn't be losing to Michigan two years in a row the way they lost to Michigan. They're, they're a better program, and they have better talent. 